so it, it's new chapter. Instead of drawing free body diagrams, we, we may still draw some free body diagrams. Uh, we're going to be thinking about these problems now in terms of work and energy. Uh, do you know what's what my high school definition for work was work equals force times distance. Work equals force times distance. But you know it's not always force times distance. It's only force times distance if the force is constant and the distance is in the same direction as the force. Okay, but let's start with force times distance. Um, and let's kind of expand on that. So first of all, instead of work, we're, we're gonna call this U, capital U. So that's work. Work done from position one to position two. All right, so instead of just a force times distance, uh, a better definition would be the integral of force dotted with dr. All right, now we're not going to do very many integrals. We're not going to have to do much of that, but let's think about why that might work. We do an integral because maybe force isn't constant. Okay, maybe force is changing. And what about that dot product? You know how a dot product works? You take the x component times the x component plus you take the y component times the y component you take the you know z component times the z component right now dot right over and does that kind of make sense if you want the force only in the direction it's kind of like taking the x component of force times the x displacement plus maybe the y component of force times the y displacement the z component of force times the z displacement and then adding those up and that's a total work done Kind of like the work done by the x force and the x direction work done uh when you add those up when you dot product two vectors you only get a scalar you don't end with a vector uh so this is just a scalar this is the magnitude the magnitude of work would be if we could we would integrate our force vector dotted with our differential position vector from one to two uh, or maybe another way of thinking about this, the work done from one to two. Uh, what if we only consider the tangential component of force, ds? So if we're only worried about the tangential component of force, if we're only worried about the component of force that is actually in the direction, then we could integrate f tangential uh, times ds. So if we wanted to write this in words, it would be the work done. Let's, let's actually write this. The work done on the object from position one to position two. All right. And it would be equal to the integral of F tangential if, if we had an equation for f tangential, or maybe if we're lucky, f tangential is just constant. Um, but if it's not constant, we would have to integrate it with respect to s. And f tangential would be the force that's in the direction of the displacement. All right, uh, but I'm not going to want to do these integrals every time. Let's let's look at some common scenarios and let's go ahead and do the integral and let's get an equation for the work for common things that we'll see okay this page and the next page i will print out for you uh i'll post them i'll print out i'll bring them to class um but if we if we were looking at a constant force f so maybe don't maybe don't write this down or just kind of sit back and listen. Uh, work is force times distance, but it's only the force that's in the direction of the distance. So in this case, if it's a constant force, we we kind of bring it out of the um, integral. Uh, the u would be p cosine alpha times l does that make sense that this in this case for a constant force 
you would just take the component of force that is in the direction of the distance times the distance. All right, just take the component of the force it's in the direction of the distance times the distance. Now, it's not always going to be cosine. You know, just, just look at the setup, look at what angle you need to find only the component that's in the direction of the displacement. Okay, how about work done by a spring? If we were to integrate this with respect to x, it might be something like an x squared over 2. All right, you can look at this, uh, but it would be the work done by a spring would be 1 half k x 1 squared minus x 2 squared. All right, and so we can use that equation if we want to know the work done by a spring. So we don't have to say, well, the force is kx. I need to integrate. You can just say, hey, the work done by a spring is 1 half k x1 squared minus x2 squared. Be careful. That x1 is not the length of the spring. It's the amount of stretch or compression of the spring. So technically, we might just put delta x squared minus delta x squared. Those x's are stretches or compression. All right, and also be careful, it's easy to kind of get these backwards. Um, we are calculating the work done on an object. Um, and so we've got x initial squared minus x final squared. Uh, but anyway, so we can use that equation if we want to find the work done by a spring. If we want to find the work done by gravity, now hold on till next class because I don't really like thinking about gravity as doing work. Next class we'll talk about potential energy for gravity and for a spring. But we could we could plug this in right here. We could do the integral. And you know what we would get? Uh, the work done is mg. I, I like to write these as h1 minus h2. The book might say y1 minus y2, but h is the vertical position. And be careful, it's 1 minus 2. So anyway, if we want to know the work done by gravity, then we've got an equation, mg h1 minus h2. We don't have to do this integral. I, we, we just did it. I'll, I'll give it to you in your notes. We did the integral. We can just use this, um, that equation to find the work done by gravity. All that it depends on is where its initial height was and where its final height is. Doesn't matter left and right, all right? It doesn't matter if it came somewhere and came back, it's initial and final. All right, but why would we use these? We can add up all the work done by forces plus the work done by a spring plus the work done by gravity, and it all would lead to the right hand side of this. What do you think the right hand side of this equation might be? Let's write sum of all the work equals something. I don't know if you already know this. Real quickly, on the left-hand side, if we substituted MA, if we substituted MA for force, and we'd end up with the integral of ADS, what is the integral of ADS VDV? And what is the integral of V dV? V squared over 2. Uh, but this is a definite integral. What we would end up with is 1 half mV 2 squared, 1 half mV 1 squared. What is 1 half mV squared? Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. The sum of all the work leads to the change in kinetic energy. Uh, instead of Ke, we're gonna write this as capital T. So here we go. The sum of all work equals the change in kinetic energy. Maybe you could write that in words. The sum of all the work done equals the change in kinetic energy. So we're gonna say, okay, left hand side of my equation. All right, what is the work done by gravity? MGH1 minus H2 plus, what's the work done by a spring? Plus, what's the work done by this force? That's the left-hand side of my equation. The right-hand side of my equation equals 
one half m v two squared minus one half m v one squared. Okay, so I'll maybe fill this out. Powers work over time. Efficiency is out over n. But last thing I want to mention: two minutes. This is a new method. All right. How is this different from what we have been doing? We have been drawing free body diagrams and some of the forces of mass times acceleration. All right. Now we're going to be looking at work and energy. The main difference, the main difference is one half m v v v. The, these equations will lead us straight to velocity. Our, our other problems we had, we had been doing, we had to sum the forces on a free body diagram equals mass times the acceleration, and then we'd have to take that acceleration and integrate or take that acceleration and use constant acceleration equations in order to get to velocity. So in general, now on the test, I'm going to force you problem one, to free body diagram and some of the force equals ma. I'm going to force you problem two to free body diagram and some forces ma. And then problem number three, I'm going to force you to do some sort of work energy. But in general, if we want to know velocities, we should probably do work energy. If we want to know accelerations, we should probably do um, the free body diagrams and some of the force equals mass times acceleration. So here's one. Here is number topic number eight. Sum of all work equals delta T. Beginning of next class, I'm going to give you, it's, it's, it's kind of the same equation, but we're going to take that equation, we're going to convert it to conservation of energy. And so you'll have two tools in your back pocket, either start with some so sigma U equals delta T, or you can start with conservation of energy, okay?